Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is, does array represent heap? And it is an easy level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given an array of size n and our task is to check if the given array can be a level order representation of a max heap. So we will have to understand a few terms if you are not already aware about it. What is a max heap first of all and what is a level order traversal. Right. Now uh, let me draw this heap first and then we will discuss the problem because I assume that some people watching this video might not even know what a heap or a max heap is. So let us discuss that first. I will just make it very very quick. So this is my binary tree. So binary uh, a max heap is nothing but just a binary tree and uh, remember that uh, in the last level I believe this is called a complete binary tree. What do I mean by it? At the last level. Uh, the nodes are going to be filled from the left right whenever so all these levels will always be filled which are not the last level and inside the last level they are always going to be filled from the left side this is very very important it is not going to like that the left nodes are not present but the right nodes are present this will never be the case right the second thing is this is going to be a binary tree the third thing about max heap is that the parent element is always growing to be greater than or equals to its children right so this element should be greater than or equals to these children right always always if at any condition at if at any position this condition is not satisfied that means one of the child child is greater than parent that means this is not a max heap and this is wrong now what is a level order, level order traversal level order traversal is basically you are writing the elements going from left to right in each level so first of all 90 then 15 then 10 then 7 then 12 and then 2 this is what a level order traversal is you just write all the elements inside this particular order starting from the root level going downwards and going from left to right these are all the definitions that we need to be aware about before even solving this particular problem now we have been given this particular traversal so how do we actually solve it so this is the this will be the input array it will be given like this so how do i construct the binary tree from this input array or how do i verify that these two nodes are the children of my current node right so there are actually two ways to do it one is to use a queue the other one is to just uh, use some mathematics now let me explain you the queue thing first so what you'll do is you'll push the root element into the queue that is the element present at array of 0 now once you push this you will have one element at uh, the queue. So this is let us say 90. Now what you will do is you will move on to the next position. Since this is the root element we do not need to verify anything we will just move on to the next position. As soon as I move on to the next position I will take out the front element from the queue and that is guaranteed to be my parent. You will realize in a while how it is always guaranteed but let us just assume that the front element in the queue is guaranteed to be the parent of 15. Now what I will do is I will check whether 15 is less than equals to 90 or not. Right now this is correct so I move on to the next index and also know that each node has two different children. So 15 is going to be one of the child and the just adjacent element is going to be the second child. So I have to verify this thing for both of the children. If both of them are good enough then I push both of them into the queue 15 and then 10. So 90 was already used so this was popped and then 15 and 10 are now in the queue. I move on to the next element now I have 7. So the parent of 7 is going to be this front element of the queue right and not only 7 but also the adjacent element to it that is 12 is also going to be a child of 15. So I verify for it for both of them I pop it out from the queue 15 is popped now 7 and 12 are pushed into the queue. The next element is 2 what is going to be the parent of 2 that is going to be 10 right. So why is it always guaranteed that the front element of the queue is going to be the parent of my current child this is because my nodes are always going to be filled from the left and I am traversing in a level order traversal where, I, where nodes are traversed from left to right. right. So basically a node will have its parent pushed first and then let us say there was a node here its children we have its children when I come to this particular child I will get to this particular node inside the queue. Right. This is how it basically works. So let me just explain you this part again. Let us say we have a tree like this. Right. This was pushed first then this particular node pushed these two nodes right and among them also this was pushed first and then this node was pushed. When I come on to the next level 
since this was pushed first for these two nodes i have this particular parent now this is removed for these two nodes this particular parent is there now among these two also these two this was pushed first so whenever i have children of these nodes this particular node will be in the front of the queue and for these two nodes this particular node now will be in the front of the queue so this is how it basically works and this is how you can get the uh, parent of each node and then you can verify your conditions now the other way is to use some mathematical sense so we have seven here now what we generally do is let us assume one based indexing one two three four five and six whenever i have a child at position p its children are always going to be at 2p and 2p plus 1 right if these positions exist then well and good if these positions do not exist then that, that basically means this particular node does not have any child right so you can go to position 2p and 2p plus 1 and then verify whether your uh, node has children or not if it has children then what are their values right for example i consider this particular 15 so i have 15 here what are going to be the children of 15 7 and 12 those should be at position 2 into 2 and 2 into 2 plus 1 that is 4 and 5 so 4 and 5 7 and 12 are present right this is another way of checking this particular thing and for example we consider if you consider 10 there is only one child of 10 that is 2 so that will that should be present at 2 in 3 into 2 that is position 6 right if you consider zero based indexing then nothing changes just it will be 2 into p plus 1 and 2 into p plus 2 the first value that we are discussing will be the position of the left child the second value that we are discussing will be the position of the right child so once you already know the position of the children you can easily verify whether they satisfy the conditions or not if they don't satisfy the conditions at any point that means uh, uh, the answer will be false for this particular input right so let me show you the final code what i have done i have implemented it using the queue thing and uh, if you can clearly see what I've done is I've initialized the queue and pushed the array 0 inside my queue. Now I am uh, traversing from index 1 to less than n. I'm taking a variable big which is q.front and it is supposedly going to be the parent. Now if array of i is e even greater than my big value then I have to return 0 because the child has become greater than the parent. And if this does not occur I'm just going to push my current element. If i plus 1 is also less than n that means my next element is also a part of the array then I'm going to check the same condition for this also because each node has two children. One is going to be the node itself or is going to be the adjacent node, right? So array of i plus 1 should also be greater than big. If it is not, I'm just going to return 0. Otherwise, I'm going to push this particular node inside my queue and then increment i once more time, right? So this for loop will increment time, uh, increment i one by one. And in this particular case, I have to do an extra increment, right? And at the end, I can just return 1. That means the input satisfies the condition for max heap. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.